Hello, my name is Vadim. I'm an IT specialist here at Nagios, and in this video, I'll show you a breakdown of the admin page in Nagios XI. Looking at the admin page might be a little daunting at first, but I'm here to help you break down each tab and hopefully help you utilize Nagios XI to its full potential. With that, let's get started. When we just get into Nagios XI page on the top, where we can find home, views, dashboards, reports, config, tools, and help, we find admin. Once we click admin, we get administrative tasks and component statuses. And to the left, we can find different categories. And the first one we can start off is system information. And here we find system status. Here we can see that it monitors your host machine with statistics such as load, CPU, memory, and more. This will update every few seconds to make sure your host machine has no problems. The next tab on the list is monitoring engine status. Here we can see an engine process, engine check statistics, and engine performance. This shows service checks, active checks, and latency that shows the data of how things are getting monitored. Next on the list, we have audit log. Here we can see that it's part of the enterprise features. Here we can see any logs that have been recorded for the past month, and we click Run. We see the date and time, source, type, user, IP address, and message. We could also send it to log server or download. We could also set favorites, and we could schedule these pages as we need. Moving on, the next tab is Check for Updates. Here we have a button to check for updates now. Down below that, we see all the available updates, the last available version, installed version, and last check. And here's the update history on the bottom. Moving on to the Users tab, we can find Manage Users. Here we could add new users to the XI interface. We could also add users from LDAP or AD, and we can email all users. Here we can see the username, name, email, phone number, authentication level, authentication type, last login, and any actions such as edit, clone, masquerade, disable, or delete. You could also select all these or select a certain users and hit delete or send an email directly to that user. Moving on, the next one on the list is LDAP and AD integration. Here, we could add a server as well as add any certificates. The next section is on notification management. Here we see any notifications that have been added. We have custom templates here. We can load or delete them and we could create custom templates down below. We could add a name, set notification messages as default for all users. We could also change email, SMS, notification preferences, time periods, and deploying to users. We could save this template or deploy as preferences down below. Our next section is on user sessions. Here we have a list of users when they're created, the last active time, the username, IP address, and the active location. Moving on to system config, under that we have system settings. Here we have a general tab where we could change URLs, time zones, and other settings. We have security, which we can edit cookie sessions, two-factor authentications, URL settings, and page settings. We also have an SSH terminal down below. Scrolling back to the top, we have passwords and accounts. Here we could edit different options for account locking and local password requirements. The next tab that we have is Theme and Displays. Here we could edit the theme, display settings, data settings, as well as warning and critical line display setting. To the right of that, we have user accounts. Here we could disable renewals, we have default user settings, and new user account information emails. We could update those settings down below. And the next tab on our list is Integration. Here we have Nagios Fusion integration, which we can use this key to connect and integrate with Nagios XI systems. The last tab on our list is backwards compatibility. Here we could allow and secure logins. The next topic under system config is license information. Here we could see what kind of license type we have, the license key. Here's some statistics of our license and the license options here. We could also enter in an enterprise key or a trial extension key down below. And we can click to update license here. Next, we are moving on to proxy configurations. Here we can enable proxy update checks and the settings down here. Moving on, we have system profile. Here we can view the system info or download the profile. Next on our list is email settings. 
Here we have an outbound and an inbound setting. Here in the outbound section, we find outbound mail settings as well as SMTP settings. This can be adjusted and changed as you need. We also have a second tab for inbound. In this tab, we have our email sent back to XI. This is not required, but can be a nice feature. We also have inbound mail settings as well as inbound connection settings. We could also test the connection down below and update settings down here. Next on our list is mobile carriers. Here we see all the most popular mobile carriers, the description, and the email to text address format. We could also delete on the right side, and we could add any new ones right here and update settings. Moving on to the next tab in our list, we have performance settings. Here we could change page and status page settings. Above that, we have a few more tabs. We'll go into Dashlet, and in here we could see our global Dashlet settings as well as the refresh rates. Here we could change the number to increase the system load or decrease depending on how our system is running. And next to that, we have databases. Here we could specify data retention and optimize intervals for databases in Nagios XI. We also have NDO and CCM. To the right of that, we have a subsystem. Here we have a few options that we could enable or disable and a BPI sync timeout. To the right of that, we have auto running. Here we could change performance settings for auto running pages such as reports and metrics. To the right of that, we have backend cache. This could help improve performance settings depending on how many hosts and services you have. For systems that have less than a thousand checks, and adding or removing hosts frequently is also not recommended. On the right of that, we have snapshots. Here we could change the amount of snapshots depending on core, error, and CCM snapshots. To the right of that, we have PDF and JPEG exporting. Here we could set a default delay and capacity planning delay in milliseconds. Moving on to the next category, we have announcement banners. Here we can make an admin announcement banner. We can add a new message here and find any messages that have been added here. Moving on, we have automatic login. Here we can enable automatic logins and we can select which account it's going to log into. Moving to the next category, we have monitoring configs and under that we have config snapshots. Here we can see the most recent config snapshots and here's all the archive snapshots we could go to. In the action tab, we have view changes, restore, download, and archive. The next tab that we have is migrate server. This tool is used to import any Nagios core configurations to Nagios XI. We could enter in the address here and the credentials down below. Moving on to the next category on check file permissions. And here we can find that the configuration tabs and config files are doing okay. The next category on our list is NRDS Config Manager. And here administrators can manage NRDS config files and distribute to remote clients. We could create a config on top with this button and we'll find a list down below. Once a client starts sending results, and if the host or service has been unconfigured, it'll default to going to unconfigured objects, which we could see is the next category right here. Here we can find any unconfigured objects we could delete or configure. We also have an auto configure settings tab here and we can enable auto importing as well as changing notifications, groups and advanced settings. Our next category is SNMP trap interface. Here we can see that we have received four traps. We can see the timestamp, event name, the OID, the trap origin, category, severity and different actions such as deleting. We find defined traps on the right tab, and here we could see the list of all defined traps. We could also edit, copy, or delete any of these traps. Our next category will be on Deadpool settings. Here in general settings, we can enable Deadpool processor as well as email any recipients. Right next to that, we have host and service settings. We have two stages, and the second stage will either deactivate or delete. We could also put any exclusions down here. Our next category is check transfers. Below that we find outbound transfers. Here we can find some global options, NRDP, and NSCA. This enables us to link multiple Nagio systems together, and NRDP is used for passive checks using NCPA. We could enable outbound checks for each of these, and we find settings below that. In inbound transfers we find NRDP and NSCA and their settings down below. 
Moving on to the next category, we have system extensions. Under that, we can find manage components. Here, we can upload a component, upload and install. We could also check for updates and install those updates. We also have an option of downloading or deleting any component here. Our next category is on managing config wizards. To upload a wizard, we click browse and then we could upload and install it. We can find additional configurations at Nagios Exchange up here. Moving on to our next category on dashlets. On this tab, we could also browse, upload and install any dashlets or find more here. We could add these dashlets by clicking this little icon and seeing that we could add this to our dashboard. The next category we have on our list is manage plugins. Here we have a list of plugins that we could download or delete. If we'd like to upload a plugin, we browse, convert line endings and upload here. Moving on to our next category, we have manage graph templates. Here we have a similar layout. For the graph templates, we could edit the template and make any changes that we feel necessary. Moving on to the next category on managing MIBs. Here we could process each MIB and upload the MIB file, as well as viewing file permissions, processing traps, undoing trap processes, and viewing all associated traps. We also find a status of if it's been processed, the day it's been processed, associated traps. We could also undo this trap or process it. The next category on our list is custom includes. In custom includes, we could browse and upload CSS files, JavaScripts, images, and others. And we can find a list right here. Moving on to the next category on our list is system backups. Under that, we can find schedule backups. Here we can see the FTP, SSH, and local backups have been disabled. We could go into each category and enable these backups. We also have settings depending on which type of backup you'd like. Under each category, we can find settings and notification settings below. And the last category that we have is local backup archives. Here we could create a backup. Note that this could take a while because it creates a backup on the existing server. Now that you know everything in the admin section of Nagios XI, feel free to customize any settings you would like, enabled or disabled. Knowing where every tool is unlocks your ability to use XI to decrease downtime and increase productivity. If you've enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like and subscribing. We have a lot more helpful videos on our YouTube channel. Thank you and see you next time.